Hello everybody in my young master's class. This is the uh, first class of acrylic, which some of you have already done. Uh, we should be around uh, week two slash three, but this is uh, just week one. So in week one, we're mostly gonna be drawing and uh, trying to talk about the chiaroscuro. The pictures that we're doing have a lot of drama and chiaroscuro is just fancy for light and dark, okay? Uh, right, Italian fancy for light and dark, okay? But, um, if I say light and dark, it's the same as chiaroscuro. Just, uh, I'll try to use the terminology, okay? Um, today we're just gonna draw, so, um, I guess we're all ready, uh, and just make sure you guys have any pencil at home. Here I'm using a 2B pencil. There we go, 2B. I'm using my kneaded eraser. I'm probably not gonna use this at all because you guys know how much I don't like to erase, okay? So, I'll keep that. For later, we'll be using our acrylic stuff. We'll discuss about that in the next session, right? So what we're gonna do right now, just as we do in many of our classes, we're just gonna do a small frame around our artwork. I am drawing on a nine by 12 paper, but I'm actually not using the nine by 12. I'm using a smaller part of this paper just for me to write notes. If you guys want, you guys could use the nine by 12, the entire thing. Uh, I also recommend that you guys get something that's a heavier paper, all right? Right now I'm using bristle paper. You guys could use watercolor paper. You guys could use heavier printer paper, but I don't recommend printer paper or anything that's, you know, nice, like an acrylic, um, like a little uh, board, you know, a canvas, all this stuff definitely works, all right? So right now it's just gonna be just a graphite drawing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to compose the picture. Composition is important whenever you guys do artwork, okay? If you guys don't compose things well, you might like the coloring or the painting of your picture, but you might not like the way it looks because it's all off balance, right? So what I'm gonna do <clears throat> is I'm just gonna find my center here and I'm gonna find thirds here. One, two. So this is one third, this is gonna be two thirds, and this is gonna be three thirds. Make sure you guys do pretty good thirds. Don't just go like, ah, eh, one, two. It's like, whoa, 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 those are not thirds. Those are very uneven, all right? Let's make sure we have pretty symmetrical thirds, all right? So now that that's all underway, we're gonna try to keep most of our vase within this third and within this upper third right here. Um, symmetry is really hard to do, but there are some steps that we could actually take to make things a little bit more symmetrical. Uh, so we want our vase to be very close to the center, but a little off to the left, but not too far off to the left because then we're not gonna fit a handle that goes over here on the end. So once I do a little light line, I'm gonna make it a little darker for you guys to see, all right? In this third line here, I'm just gonna make myself an oval. And I could do many ovals, I'm just gonna keep them light, and at the end, I'll keep the oval that I prefer, which is probably going to be this one here, and I'll get rid of the ones that I don't like, all right? Because uh, this one's too big, so I could actually do without it. I usually don't erase, but I don't want to get you guys confused. All right, so here we go. Now, I'm going to pull just two little ins, just a little in here, and on the same edge, the little in here. Make sure you have about the same distance, all right? If you guys have about the same distance, it's going to be roughly in the right place. All right, now we're gonna do a neck. That neck is gonna come in and it's gonna come in. So it's not going this way, it's not going that way. They're both coming in a little bit, okay? My fingers are kind of crooked, but you guys could kind of get an idea. All right, now I'm gonna do a little happy face here. That's gonna be the lip area of our vase. Make sure you have about the same distance, same distance from here to here, same distance from there to there, all right? I'm gonna do a little semicircle on the inside, a little semicircle on the outside. Take your time on this, you guys. There's no need to rush. If you guys like, oh, he's going really fast, I'm gonna have to rush. No, you guys could always pause this along the way. Don't forget, it's a video, so there's that good old pause button. Make sure you guys use it, all right? Try not to go with super speed. Now I'm gonna just do the the uh, the handle here, which is just gonna be 
two parallel lines that end on this part here, and then a, another parallel line that we do on the top just to give it that illusion of 3D, all right, or three dimension. Now, before I go into any detail, this thing is gonna have a lot more detail. I still wanna compose the rest of the objects, okay? So one of the objects that I have is a huge apple. I don't know if it's a huge apple or a little vase, okay? But, or maybe it's a little bit of both, a little vase and a huge apple. I'm also gonna do my little cutie uh, orange here, like the one you guys take to school. And on the other side, I'm gonna do a big mango. It's only part of a big mango though. The rest is behind the uh, the paper, you know, imagine, imagine where it is. I'm also gonna do a tablecloth here. Just gonna have some texture to the tablecloth. Tablecloth continues over here, okay. It's gonna have some texture to this tablecloth. Another tablecloth, that's why I didn't do the bottom of my base because I'm actually gonna have a piece of cloth that overlaps my base. And just a little bit of cloth back over here and a little bit of cloth back over here. These are not necessarily aligned perfectly because it's just a crumpled up piece of, uh, of I don't know, it looks like a, like a shirt or some sort of cloth, just any random sheet or whatever, okay? All right, so here we go. Big information is here. If you guys get confused, you guys could erase some of these things. I actually don't want to erase them, but uh, if it was just a regular drawing, but I'll erase them just to make them easier for you guys to see on the uh, on the tablet. All right, so my big shape is there. You know, all that good stuff is in the picture. Take your time. If, you know, I probably would let you guys work for like 10, 15 minutes in this part, go ahead and use those 10, 15 minutes, okay? Even if you just wanna see how I draw, and then you guys wanna repeat and just rewind the video, you guys could do that again. Um, but just make sure you take your time, all right? Don't rush, no need to rush. All right, now that the big information is in the picture, I'm gonna start looking for two things, two things, okay? One of the things is gonna be more work or more detail on the actual drawing, and the big thing is the big map between our lights and our darks. So we're actually gonna try to map our shadows, okay? We're, after this, we're gonna be doing a little bit of hatching, this should take about a one and a half hour class, all right? Um, if you guys do this right. If you guys rush, you guys could take 20 or 30 minutes, but it might be a little harder to paint, all right? So here we go. So I'm gonna do the neck of my of my teapot, sorry, not the neck, the spout. And the spout is actually a rooster, all right? And don't go crazy with this rooster. It's a sculpted rooster. rooster. So it actually barely looks like a rooster. The only way you could tell it's a rooster is it has a beak and it has a crest. But aside from that, I mean, it could be, you know, a different bird from Latin America, you know, from Africa. I do not know, but it is kind of roostery looking. I'm gonna do a handle here. I'm just gonna do like a three dimensional cube. Just kind of follow this. All right, that looks pretty good. In the center of my apple, I'm gonna do the, uh, the um, where the stem would come from, the pit, on the center of my little uh, cutie orange. I'm gonna do another little pit with a stem. And, you know, in the bigger picture, this has all the information, all right? Looks pretty, you know, neutral, but it looks like it has it all. All right, now, Using the same lightness, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do uh, my core shadows and my cast shadows, all right? This line is very light because I'm just trying to map my information. So here, this line goes and it kind of moves with the shape of the vase here. Then we have, this is the cast shadow of the neck. This here is the core shadow of the actual body. This is the actual core shadow of the neck. So everything has a core and a cast shadow, okay? This here, that little lip, cast a little shadow right there. The neck of the rooster is a core shadow. The crest of the rooster is a, is a core shadow. We don't have to do much there. It already has a lot of that information. Uh, now, 
on the apple, the bottom part of my apple is actually the shadow area, okay? So I'm gonna try to go ahead and just separate the big lights and big darks. Big lights and big darks. It almost looks like a Pokemon ball or a Pokeball. Or don't judge me because I'm not sure what it actually is, but I think it's a Pokemon ball. All right, all right, here we go. Now I'm gonna do my little cast shadow that goes here. If you guys wanted to, this thing has a little leaf. You guys could also do the cast shadow of the leaf itself. The leaf is very skinny. It's actually barely visible, but you guys could definitely do the cast shadow there. And then half of my mango is going to be, no, not half, like uh, one third or one fourth of my mango is going to be a shadow too. All right. <clears throat> now, just to not lose my drawing, I'm going to go in my shadows and I'm going to make a heavier contour because I might run the risk of losing my drawing here. So just in my shadows, heavier contour, little lip, you know, a little bit more detail. Don't make it too simple. Uh, that way we have a really fun, complex drawing. The handle, the rooster, this thing goes around the eye, the crest, I'm going to go a little darker in the front, but not too dark, okay? I want to keep my front, my contour in the front just a little lighter, but I am pushing the, the one in the back just a little heavier. I'm not going to do really complex hatching on this. I'm just going to do actual just hatching. I'm not even going to do cross hatching. I'm not going to do anything of that sort. I'm going to keep it just extremely, extremely simple. I actually just want to know where my shadows are going to go and where my lights are gonna go, okay? Even the tablecloth, you guys, these have shadows. You guys just have to uh, just take your time, just kind of draw them out. Um, and once we're done with this step, I actually want you guys to spend some good time on this. I would probably, if this was the regular class, I would probably, you know, let you guys work for like 10 minutes, make sure you guys get all the details that you need, uh, make sure it's all in the picture, you know, Spend some good time on here. All right, with me, time fast forward. I'm all done, you guys are all done. Now, I'm gonna start our hatching. And the one thing I want you guys to remember when you hatch, I don't want you guys to hatch a big vase. I'll give you an example over here, okay? So if you guys have shadows here, I don't want you guys just to hatch everything like this because you actually lose the form of the object, okay? You have to hatch individual things at a time. So let's say I wanna hatch this thing here. I'm just gonna hatch the neck. And I am hatching a little darker. Don't forget, we are using acrylic paint over this. So if you guys don't hatch dark enough, you guys might actually not see uh, your drawing once you guys do the acrylic paint. All right, hatching a little there, hatching a little there, all right. Now I'm gonna hatch the neck. Now I'm gonna hatch part of the body. I wanna keep my line straight or my hatching line straight. If my lines are too long, I'm probably gonna start curving my lines. So I want some consistency here. Remember, part of hatching is the quality of your line. It's not how fast you do it, but how consistent you do it. All right, so I'm going down over here, but remember, I'm gonna stop, okay? Here I forgot something, there's a little cast shadow that comes on this side, and a little cast shadow that comes on this side too. So I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna hatch this part in, and I'm also gonna hatch this shadow in. I'm gonna stop here, then I'm gonna hatch the bottom in, right in here so now you can see the actual thing casting a shadow on itself and I'm just gonna continue there try to keep your line as consistent as possible consistency is important so see I didn't go all the way to the bottom I could have gone all the way to the bottom my line could have still been straight but I don't want to show you guys to do just big long lines if they're gonna be inconsistent on your end and also on my end, they might start, once I do long enough lines, 
it might actually just get really inconsistent. Okay, there we go. All right, now let's go on to the rooster. I know only part of the rooster is dark. Let's go on to the crest. Here we go. And pretty much all done. So this thing has a little bit of volume now. We know where the light is hitting. We know where the um, midtones are. Well, we could actually even map our little highlight right here. All right. So we know where the midtones go. We know where our shadows go. Now I'm going to go to my other objects, all right, like my apple. If you guys want, you could start building up the hatching on your apple too. So I could hatch really light on the whole thing, except that little highlight that I, you just saw me kind of create right now. See that little part that I'm being very careful with. Then I could hatch a little darker in my shadows here. Again, make sure you lift your line. And then I'm gonna hatch a little darker in the pit, in the little hole. And then just have it fade away. Then just have it fade away. Okay, so there's some volume to my apple, pretty cool. All right, now my little uh, orange. And I'm gonna just go in here, hatch my shadow, hatch my shadow. Again, a good job on this takes the time, okay? A not so good job doesn't take time, but it makes your painting harder. I'm not at home, like, uh, I'm not in like, it's not like in the studio that I could actually see what we're doing, but just remember, your drawing will reflect your painting a little bit, all right? The quality of your painting. So really good, my cutie's there. And now I'm gonna hatch my mango. Now I'm gonna start hatching. This thing cast a shadow throughout here. The vase cast a shadow on the tablecloth. So I'm gonna value there. But see, I didn't make it that nice. I don't need to make a nice shadow. Everything is kind of creased and wrinkled around there. This thing has a hole in here. And then it has a darker hole. So I'm gonna do a second hatching. Remember, build up your hatching. Don't rush your hatching. Some of you guys might want to say, like, oh, I'm just going to do the dark ones first. And then you guys are going to have a really hard time blending your color together. Just do just do the one that, you know, um, the build up. You should be okay. I'm going to do this thing. has a shadow here. I'm going to add a little shadow in there, too. All right. And finally, I'm going to do a big hatching here. and a little hatching in here. All right, pretty good. And you guys, this will do it for the drawing session of the acrylic, all right? This is gonna take you guys a bit of time. You're at home at this point, so it doesn't matter if you guys finish a little faster, if you guys finish in one hour and 15, or if you guys finish in an hour and a half, or if you guys finish in an hour and 45, that's fine, just take your time, do a good job. That way when we actually start painting, uh, you guys will actually have an easier time, nothing to worry about, and you know, uh, kind of uh, go really fast on that end. Uh, we will start our painting in session number two, okay? So just take your time on this, and uh, I say goodbye, all right, bye-bye.